you're into machine learning, then you probably know that feature engineering is a crucial step in building a model that actually works. Basically, it's the process of taking raw data and turning it into something that a machine learning algorithm can use to make predictions. But why is it so important? Well, think about it like this. If you're trying to teach a computer to recognize pictures of cats, it's not just enough to show a bunch of cat pictures. You need to give it some kind of structured information to work with, like the color of the cat's fur, the shape of its ears, or the size of its whiskers. That's where feature engineering comes in. It helps you to extract the right kind of information from your data and turn it into something that a machine learning algorithm can actually use. Hello everyone and welcome to this video on feature engineering by IntelliPad. So in this video, we'll cover the basics of feature engineering, including what it is, why it is important and how to do it effectively. We'll explore different techniques for feature engineering and explain how to apply these techniques to your own data sets. Whether you're a data scientist, machine learning enthusiast or just curious about the world of AI, this video will provide you with the knowledge and skills you need to take your machine learning models to the next level. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to receive regular updates from us. First, we'll talk about introduction to feature engineering and then we'll look at different techniques for feature engineering. Then we'll talk about handling continuous features and then we'll look at normalization and standardization and then we'll talk about handling categorical features. Then we'll look into feature selection and the common methods for feature selection. And with that, we'll conclude. So let us start with introduction to feature engineering. Feature engineering is a machine learning pre-processing step that is used to transform raw data into features that can be used to create a predictive model using machine learning or statistical modeling. So feature engineering primarily focuses on preparing a suitable input data set that meets the requirements of the machine learning algorithm and improving the performance of machine learning models. Let us look at some of the different techniques for feature engineering, starting with handling missing data. So many machine learning algorithms do not accept data with missing values. So handling missing data is critical. Missing values in the data set might lead to error and poor performance of the machine learning model. Missing data can cause a variety of issues. Missing data reduces statistical power, which is the likelihood that the test will reject the null hypothesis if it's true. Missing data can cause bias in the parameter estimation. It has the potential to reduce sample representativeness. So here are some of the common missing values in a data set. Some of the ways to handle missing data are by variable deletion and by replacing missing values with mean, median or more. Starting with variable deletion, missing values can be dealt with by deleting the columns with null values. And if more than half the rows in a column are null, the column can be dropped as the column is not an important feature in that case. Whereas in replacing missing values with mean, median and more, there are three main missing value imputation techniques. So mean is the average of all values in a set. Median is the middle number in a set of numbers stored by size. And more is the most common numerical value for two or more sets. Columns in the data set with numeric continuous values can be replaced with the mean median mode of the column's remaining values. In comparison to the previous method, this method can prevent data loss. A statistical approach to deal with missing values is to replace the above two approximations. When imputing missing values by mean, first we replace the missing value with mean when there is a symmetric data distribution. Second, imputing missing values with mean data can be done on numerical data. Do not replace missing value with mean value when data is skewed as it may lead to lower the model accuracy. Coming to imputing missing values with median, it is good to consider to replace the missing value with median when the data is skewed. Imputing missing values with median value can be done only on numerical data. And when imputing missing values by mode, it is good to consider to replace the missing value with mode when data is skewed. Imputing missing values with mode value can be done on both categorical as well as numerical data. Let us look at handling continuous features. Continuous features present in the data set consist of a distinct range of values. Before you train machine learning algorithms, it is critical to deal with continuous features in your data set. Methods to deal with continuous features are normalization and standardization. Let's talk about normalization. Normalization is a scaling technique used in machine learning to change the values of numerical columns in a data set to use a common scale during data preparation. It isn't required for all data sets in a model, it is only required when the ranges of machine learning model features differ. Normalization, also known as min-max scaling, is used to transform features to a similar scale. 
It scales the values ranging from 0 to 1. It is useful when features present in the data set are of different scales. SkyKit Learn Library provides the min-max scalar method to normalize features and it is beneficial when there are no other outliers. Moving on to standardization. It is a scaling technique in which the values are centered around the mean with a unit standard deviation. It makes sure that each feature present in the data set has a mean of 0 and the standard deviation as 1. The distance between data points is then used for plotting similarities and differences. It is given by the formula shown here. Moving on to handling categorical features. So categorical data is a type of data that is used to group information with similar characteristics while numerical data is a type of data that expresses information in the form of numbers. To be used in most machine learning libraries, non-numerical values must be transformed to integers or floats. The following are some of the common methods to deal with categorical features. First is label encoding and the second is one-hot encoding. In label encoding, the approach is very simple and it involves converting each value in a column into a number. Here, each label is given a unique integer based on alphabetical order. Different labels are there in a state feature that is assigned different numeric values. So for its implementation, all we have to do is import the label encoder class from the sklearn library, fit and transform the first column of the data, replacing the existing text data with the new encoded data. So here, label encoder from skykitlearn library is used to convert categorical values into binary. The only challenge with this is that it assigns a unique number to each class which leads to the priority issue. Moving on to one-hot encoding, the action of converting is known as encoding. One-hot encoding converts the categorical data into numeric data by splitting the column into multiple columns. Depending on which column contains what values, the numbers are replaced by ones and zeros. What one-hot encoding does is that it adds new features based on the unique values present in the categorical column. It is a process to create dummy variables. Each category is represented as one-hot vector in this technique. One-hot encoder from SkyKitLearn library is used to create one-hot encoding of integer encoded values. Moving on to feature selection, it is a process of selecting the subset of most appropriate and relevant features to be used in model building either automatically or manually. Feature selection is accomplished by either including or excluding irrelevant features from the dataset without changing them. Few of the most compelling reasons to use feature selection are it helps reduce the complexity of a machine learning model, it helps to improve the accuracy of a model. It is used to reduce overfitting. It allows machine learning models to train faster. Now we'll look at common methods for feature selection. First is removing features with low variance. SKLearn.feature selection module provides several classes which can be used for feature selection or dimensionality reduction on sample sets. Also, it can be used to improve estimators' accuracy scores or enhance their performance on very high dimensional datasets. Variance threshold is a simple baseline approach to the feature selection. All features whose variance does not meet a certain threshold are removed. It removes all zero variance features by default, that is features with the same value across all samples. Threshold can be selected using the formula given for Boolean features. Moving on to univariate feature selection. Statistical tests can assist in the selection of independent features from a data set that have the strongest relationship with the target feature. Example, chi-square test. The select k-best class in the SkyKitLearn library can be used with a variety of statistical tests to choose a certain number of features. Here, k is the number of top features to select. To import the select k-best class from sklearn.feature selection, import select k-best. The third method is recursive feature elimination. Recursive feature elimination is a feature selection technique that reduces the complexity of a model by selecting important features by eliminating the less important ones. Weaker features are removed one by one until the desired number of features to select is eventually reached. Importance of each feature is obtained by attributes such as COF, feature importances. To import RFE from sklearn module, you can use the following function. Next comes feature selection using select from model. Scikit-learn library provides select from model class which is based on machine learning model estimation to extract best features. Select from model feature selection is based on specific attributes such as COF or feature importances threshold. 
the mean is the threshold by default. To import the select from model class, we use the following function. Moving on to sequential feature selection. Sequential feature selection is a greedy algorithm which is used to find the best features by moving either forward or backward based on the cross validation score of an estimator. Let's talk about SFS forward. It makes a feature selection by starting with zero feature and identifying the one feature that maximizes a cross validated score when a machine learning model is trained on this single feature. After selecting the first feature, the process is repeated by adding new features until the desired number of features is reached. Now let's look at SFS backward. The similar concept is used by SFS backward, but it operates the opposite direction. It starts with all the features and removes all the features until the desired number of features are reached. And finally, we'll talk about correlation matrix heat map. It shows the relationship between the features or target features. Correlation can be positive or negative. Pandas library provides the CORR method to find the correlation of all features present in a data frame. Correlation coefficient varies from minus 1 to 1. If the value is 1, it shows that there is a strong positive correlation between two features. And minus 1 means features have strong negative correlation. With that, we have come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. If you want to make a career in data science, then IntelliPAT has IIT Madras Advanced Data Science and AI Certification Program. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by IIT professors and industry experts.